before I start today, Sharp X68000 emulator setup guide from Windows PC. If you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a setup guide and it really helps out my channel too. So we're looking at setting up a very awesome emulator today known as XM6 Type G. Now the really good thing about this is that I'm going to link in my description to an entire hard disk image and you can pretty much play all the games without worrying about swapping disks over and let's just face it, Sharp X68000 is a real pain most of the time to emulate lots of disks and lots of faffing around unnecessarily. So first of all, let's just talk about what the Sharp X68000 is. It's a Japanese computer, or was a Japanese computer, and it didn't really reach the West uh, in comparison. I would say this is on par with Commodore Amiga and to some extent Atari ST. But anyways, what we're gonna do is start downloading some stuff. And like I said, I'm gonna leave the links in the description for everything in this video. Everything's pretty much freeware with this, so you're good to go. So first of all, we're gonna need to download the XM6 Type G version 3.36 binary just there. Just download this and it's likely going to come up saying it's insecure. It's absolutely fine. I'll virus check this. Just go to keep and download that one. The next thing we're going to need is over here on emulator files, we're going to download system ROMs. Above it, you'll find Sharp X68000. Just download the system ROMs. That's going to bring you to a mega link. You're going to need these in order to boot up the emulator itself. Like I said, everything's pretty much freeware today. And finally, we're going to need that hard disk drive image. So you can download this. We're going to just click on there and that's going to bring us over to a Google Drive. So we're going to download this. This one's just roughly around one gigabyte in size. Now I've already downloaded everything which I've just linked you to and we're going to start off first of all with the emulator itself which is of course the XM6 Type G. So if I just double left click on it and just drag and drop the folder inside onto the desktop. Next up we're just going to delete that zip folder of the emulator, we no longer need that one. Now if we open up the MS6 folder we're going to find the emulator in here. If we double left click, Windows protected your PC, more info and run. It's going to say it requires file. so if we OK this. It's going to close down, that's fine. So what we downloaded just a minute ago was the ROM files. These have actually downloaded in an archive. This is all the essential ROM files that we need to boot. So we're going to drag and drop those into the same folder as the emulator, just like that. Now we're going to delete that ROMs archive, we no longer need that one. And lastly, we got the hard disk drive image. Inside, we're going to find file here sxsi-scsi underscore version 220.hds What I'm going to do is just drag and drop that into my emulator folder. Okay, so everything's now self-contained in the folder for the emulator. We got the ROM files in there and we've also got that hard disk drive image. So let's boot up the emulator again. Okay then, so we're booted up and we're going to get a ROM warning. So what we're going to do is just left click in the future, do not show this message, just go to It's fine. So once the emulator is booted up, we got Japanese language just there with a little floppy disk. Very cute. So what we're going to do is go to Tools, and from Tools, we're going to just go down to Options from here. Okay, so we're going to select System, and just make sure Model is on XVI. Now, you're going to notice just here, under MPU Clock, this is actually defaulted to 16.7 MHz. Some games might appear to be too fast. If that's the case, just drop that down to around 10 MHz. I'm going to leave it for this on default and see how this goes. And whilst we're here, under expansion main RAM, just drop this down and from 2 megabyte, you can bump this right up to 12 megabyte if you like. Next thing that we're going to need to do is actually go up to SCSI just here, so SCSI. And there's a SCSI disk via SCSI interface. There's two arrows just here, if you left click on the top arrow, 
it's going to open up this panel now what we need to do on id zero just go across and double left click on there now we're going to link this up with that hard disk drive image and this is of course going to be in my folder with everything else here it is hds and we're going to select that one this is now in place now I'm going to go over to joystick this time. Now for me this took me a little bit of time configuring this in, wondering how the hell I get my controller working with this. So Legends has it that other people have got more success by downloading an older version of this emulator and then using this, copying the configuration file and then putting it into the latest version of this emulator. But I persevered. And what I did was first of all go to device and I've got Xbox Series controller through Bluetooth connected. Device A, Bluetooth X input. And I found that under port 1, Magical Pad appears to work for some games. I can't say this is going to be the same for people watching this video, but we're going to try that. And that's it, we're pretty much set up, so I'm going to press OK from here. Next thing we're going to do is reboot the emulator because of course we've got that hard disk drive put into place now. So if we go up the file, down to reset. Now to make this into full screen, I'm going to press Alt and Enter on my keyboard together. And as you can see on the bottom right hand side it says HD Busy so the emulator is just reading. And here we go, we're in. So very nice little presentation screen we got just here. Excellent stuff. So as we can see in front of us just here, we got action, adventure, fighting, puzzle, racing and so on. Now my controller doesn't actually work for this part. So what I'm doing is using my page up and page down buttons on my keyboard. And to go into one of these, I'm gonna press enter. So let's just go for say shooting press enter now we got sub categories of this genre so I'm gonna go randomly into vertical now we got a list of lots of different games just here if I choose all these games at random let's just select Ajax now to start the game in each one of these folders we're gonna find a dot bat file some of them are at the top some of them are located at the bottom if we enter on dot bat and then press enter again and here we go, we're in, it's now loading. Okay, so the game works fine and my controller is also working really well with that game. So what I've done is press Alt and Enter on my keyboard in order to come back into window mode. I've then gone back to File and I've reset. So this is then going to in turn bring us back into the main menu and of course the hard disk drive containing all the games is already in place. And of course to go back in the full screen mode we can either press Alt and Enter again or just go up to View and full screen just there. We've also got a stretch image just here, which I would really recommend. We also got render options for video settings, that type of thing. We also got a video tab here for different graphic colors. Uh, personally, I've had no issues running everything from default. It's just such a nice emulator. So back down to full screen. And again, like I said, I'm using page up and page down. Uh, so this time I'm gonna go to action. And pretty much to my knowledge, most games are in here already. And like I've been saying, they are freeware or considered freeware game nowadays. I've investigated this and put a lot of research into doing this. I'm going to go down to Running Gun. And we've got loads just here. So Atomic Robo Kid is personally one of my favourites. So select Atomic Robo Kid. And again, the dot .bat file was actually at the top of this one.
And that's it for today's XMX6 emulator setup guide for Windows PC. So as you've seen through the gameplays on there, some of the games I played, such as Soul Feast, obviously the Sega Mega CD is famous for that particular game. The sharp version of that is miles better. It sounds miles better too. And just remember that the settings I showed you for the emulator, some games might work, some might not. You might need to change the CPU speeds as well as the RAM. But the majority of games which I tested works fine on those settings which I showed you to do in the video. And another thing I'm going to mention is by pressing the escape button once you're in the game selection screen, that will take you out. So just remember escape. Anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. Also join me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.